What's up, YouTube fam? Got something really cool to share with you guys today, so make sure you stay tuned for the entire video. So in the previous video, we went ahead, powder coated these rims and hubs from the XR80. This is my girlfriend's bike. And today, I'm gonna take you step by step on how I'm gonna go about lacing up the wheels for it. And if you guys didn't see the video I did on powder coating these wheels, it is definitely worth a watch. It'll bring you through step by step on how to do the exact same thing at home in your own garage. I'll link that video right up here in the corner of the screen. I know a lot of you guys are gonna be asking about the CRT50 build, so here's what's up. Waiting on a couple parts coming from overseas, hint, hint, carbon fiber. And I ran into a few hurdles, just more like time consuming stuff. If I'm gonna do a build, I'm gonna do it right. Obviously, I want to see it done as soon as possible, just like you guys, but I'm pouring my heart and soul into this thing, and I think in the end it'll show. So just trying to be patient with it. But what's nice is when I'm waiting on parts for this bike, I can still work on the XR80 and pump out some good content for you guys. There's a lot of cool things I want to do to this bike, and in the end, I think Haley will be pretty pumped with it. Before we lace up these wheels, I'll need to pop in some fresh bearings in the hubs and get the brake panels back together and ready to go. Now, as far as bearings go, I'll be using this all ball set I snagged from Rocky Mountain. You can see they're a little bit frosty. I've had them in the freezer for a bit. Now, before you pop in any bearings, you wanna have them in the freezer for at least overnight. That'll make installation that much easier. So what happens is the cold actually shrinks the metal or shrinks the bearing a little bit. And then you can even apply a little bit of heat to the bearing race and the bearing most of the times will literally just drop right into place. So the first thing I'm gonna do is find a socket that fits in the hub pretty snug. That one will do. Not quite as tight as I would have hoped. So you wanna find a socket that hits on the outer race of the bearing here. If you push on the inner race, that'll damage the bearing. I'm gonna bring this hub over to the press here. The press I'm using is a 12 ton hydraulic one from uh, Harbor Freight. And I'll be using some wood on the bottom to protect the powder coating here. Looks like we got the right bearing there. So I'm gonna give the hub just a little bit of heat here and see if this bearing drops in. If not, we'll have to use the press. And you gotta work pretty fast before the hub cools off and the bearing warms up. Get this thing all centered up. Gonna give it a little bit of pressure here. Sweet, it's going in good. Looks like it's all the way down. Cool, that one went in pretty good. Got the brake side bearing in. And one thing you do not wanna forget is the spacer that goes in between the bearings. I've accidentally had both bearings in there without the spacer, and that's one of the many times I've been pissed off working on a dirt bike. It's a bad day when that happens. And just because I'm super curious, I wanna pull one of the seals off of this other bearing and see how much grease is inside. I'm gonna lift that thing up. We've got some grease in there, so that's a good sign. Looks like it's packed pretty much full. I don't know if I would do uh, much more grease than that. I would say they did a pretty good job from the factory grease in this bearing. It's gonna pop the seal back on. And while this thing is still cold, we should probably press it in the hub. Now on this one, I'm just gonna heat up the hub really quickly, not talk as much, and see if that bearing drops right in. So let's give it a shot. Oh, and with the powder coating, you don't, you don't wanna get it too hot because you could damage the coating there. Yeah, we're gonna have to press this bearing in as well. No big deal. And honestly, if you don't have a press, you can get away with using just a socket and a hammer as well. Just make sure you're on a wood table. So as you're pounding it in, make sure the bearing's going in straight. It's even from side to side. And then just basically whack on it until you notice a difference in the sound and the feel as well. And that indicates you're at the bottom of the uh, seat for the bearing. So I've got both bearings in. 
I've got the seal here. Just gonna put a little bit of grease on the lip of it to help with installing it into the hub. And a lot of times you can just press these in with your fingers. They're not in there overly tight. And I usually just press it in until it's flush with the surface of the hub here. So rear hub is done, let's do the front. Now for the front, I'm gonna show you how you can do it without a press, since I'm guessing most of you guys don't have a press at home. Um, having a press is just more practical, but pounding them in with a hammer works good too. I'm gonna torch the hub. Drop the bearing in. Get the socket lined up. You might wanna lay down a uh, rag here to protect that powder coating. Just pull up the socket from time to time and check. Make sure that thing is going in straight. So you can hear the sound of it right now, the tone of the hit. And once that tone changes, you're at the bottom of the hub. So right there, you can hear it sounds a little bit different. Flip it over, get the spacer in there, give it a little heat. Oh great, my torch is out of propane. We are gonna have to do this without heat. Pop in a fresh seal and we'll be done. Sweet, now we can move on to building the brake panels. Now we've got a pile of parts here. Let's see if we can get it back together. The old shoes still got some good life left. So I'm gonna give them a sand and reuse them. And I gave everything a nice cleanup a little earlier so it's all fresh and ready to go together. So first things first, I'm gonna have to pop in this little seal that seals the inner part of the panel. Just gonna dab a little bit of grease in there to help things out. And this seal should just pop right in. Shouldn't need to press it in or anything. And then we've got the brake shaft. You wanna get as much grease on there as possible. And this goes through the back side. And then next up, we have this little plate that goes on the shaft and the arrow faces outward. And on the splines on the plate, you'll notice there's a little notch in it and that notch will line up with the notch on the shaft. So you'll notice on the top of the shaft there on the splines, there's a notch. So we're gonna line those up just like that. Now the shaft could go two different ways here. Basically we need this to be lined up with the pin on the other side. It can't be cocked to the side like that. And you wanna have it with the arrow closest to the indicator on the panel. So I'm sure a lot of you are wondering what the arrow on the plate and the marking on the panel are for. So basically that indicates brake shoe wear. When you pull the lever, if those two line up like that, that indicates your brake shoes are too worn. There's not enough material left on them and you'll need to replace them. So just a nice little feature that Honda added that I don't think a lot of people realize. And then now to the other side here, I'm gonna put together the brake shoes. So the brake shoes are the same for the front and back and the same for the left and right on either panel. It's gonna take a set of springs here, hook it to one side, goes underneath like that. This one goes over top and just hold it in place. Make sure your pads are lining up like the uh, half moon there. Get the bottom in there. There we go. And then to get them on the panel, just gonna pull them apart obviously. I'm gonna get the shoes on the shaft first and then pull them over the half moon. Get one side on, give it a little tug, and there we go. Now the next step should be to put the brake arm on the shaft, but honestly, I think these brake arms are a little too corroded for my liking. I mean, I spent all this time making the hubs and rims look good, so I'm gonna sandblast these real quick and Cerakote them black. And while I'm Cerakoting these parts, might as well add some more to the batch. Don't mind all this crap down here. Those are just random bolts. Had to find some bolts for this bike, but let's see what else we could Cerakote while we're at it. 
I think the axle spacers could look pretty good in black. And there was one more thing here. I'm not liking the look of that sprocket. Kind of off-putting to the rest of the bike. So I'm going to grind this thing down and coat that black as well. Might as well add a few more parts to the batch while we're at it. And since these parts are all pretty small, I'm going to sandblast them here in the blast cabinet. And for the sprocket, since it's a little bit bigger, I'm going to prep it using the rough Scotch-Brite wheel over here. That should rip all of that plating off pretty quickly. So I've got everything blasted and prepped for Cerakote, and I'm gonna run you through the process real quick of how this goes. So I'm gonna drop these parts in this bucket of acetone, let them soak for about 30 minutes, kind of kill off any oil or grease that may be on them, and then gonna run them through the oven at 400 degrees, kind of just degas them, burn off again any remaining oil or dirt, then it's time to spray. I'll be using this uh, graphite black and I'll be spraying them out with this mini HVLP gun. I'll drop a link down below to where I bought this stuff. So now the parts are all done with the prep process. Soaked them in acetone, ran them through the oven for about 45 minutes, and now they're ready to spray. And one of the coolest things about Cerakote is you don't have to mask anything off, even splines or threads. Um, just a really thin coating that holds up really well too. You could even go ahead and start Cerakoting like spokes and nipples. I'm not gonna go that far with this bike, but uh, just an idea for you guys. So I'm gonna get this Cerakote ready to go and we can start spraying. Now that I've got everything sprayed out, I'm gonna let this stuff sit for about 15 minutes to dry. Then I'm gonna pop it in the oven for the curing process, which is an hour long at 300 degrees. Pretty pumped on how these parts came out. I love the Cerakote stuff. So now we can finish up putting the brake panels together. So the brake arm just goes right onto these splines here, but there's a locating dot on the arm and on the shaft. So you want to line those up. And it's super nice that the Cerakote is such a thin coating that it doesn't affect the fitment on the splines there. It slides right on. I'm going to put a little Loctite on the bolt that holds the arm onto the shaft. And once that's on, we're all finished up with the front panel. Let's go ahead and test it out, make sure everything's working smoothly. Oh yeah, that's buttery have some smooth working brakes on this bike. Front panel's done, let's bust out the rear. Dude, that black and red is gonna go perfectly with the rims and hubs. Can't wait to get these all together. Now with the brake panels done, it's time to start lacing up the wheels. Now obviously I don't wanna pair some crusty looking spokes with a freshly powder coated rim and hub. So I'm gonna have to polish these things up. Now a lot of people recommend replacing spokes, but honestly, if they're not bent up or severely rusted on the threads or just in bad shape overall, you can definitely reuse them. Now this bike will not really be getting that much abuse, but if you have a bike that's being ridden hard day in and day out, then I would definitely go the safer route and replace the spokes. So what I'm gonna be using here to polish up the spokes is this Mother's Mag and Aluminum Polish. Then I'm just gonna apply the polish to some paper towel and get to work. This is gonna take some serious elbow grease. So another option we have for polishing the spokes is to use this buffing wheel over here on the buffing machine. And we're using a white rouge compound as well. So you can achieve a better result using this wheel. It's a little more time consuming, but uh, this is the route I'm gonna go. 
Now, a lot of you are probably wondering, why would you spend the time to polish spokes? Well, dudes, if I'm gonna do a project, I'm gonna spend the time and do it right. I know it's pretty time consuming, but it's kind of an OCD thing for me. It's insane the difference polishing the spokes made. Those things are really gonna pop on the bike. Definitely worth the extra 45 minutes. So we're gonna start by lacing up the front wheel first. I like to work on a towel. These coatings are pretty fresh and they may not be hardened up yet. So on this particular wheel, the lettering on the rim is gonna be facing up with the brake side of the hub facing down. And that's why it's important to take pictures before you take things apart. That way you have something to refer to. Now on these wheels, because they use an angled spoke, meaning they have an angled head on them, instead of a straight pull spoke, we're gonna have to put all the spokes in before we start lining up with the holes on the rim. So typically what I would do on a full size bike that uses a straight pull spoke, has like a straight head on it, you can do half the hub or half of the spokes and then flip it over and do the other half but it's a little trickier on this one. So the longer spokes are the right side spokes. So I'm gonna get all of these ones in this side of the hub and then flip over the hub and do the shorter side. Okay, so now this is where those pictures you should have taken earlier are gonna come in handy for finding the pattern of the spokes. On this particular wheel, the inside spokes, this is an inside one here. You can see it's on a lower hole. That's gonna face this way. And then the outside spokes or the top spokes are gonna go this way. So I'm just gonna weave these kind of into their pattern. Whoops, wrong way with that one. Kind of get them into place. And then once I put the rim on top of it, we'll be able to see pretty easily which spokes go to which holes on the rim. So now you can kind of see the pattern going on with this side of the wheel. The upper spokes or the top spokes lay on top of the bottom spokes. And we have a series of crosses here. Gonna kind of put the rim over top of it. Kind of disregard the spokes on the other side for right now and we can start to see where these spokes are gonna line up. So that one goes there. Oh, and one thing I forgot to mention earlier is if you push in the heads of the spokes here, that kind of just pushes the spoke into where it's supposed to be. So that kind of helps with alignment too. And it's at this point where you can start threading nipples onto the spokes. I would just go a couple threads down on each spoke. And actually before you do that, you're gonna wanna put some anti-seize lubricant on those threads. This is a really important step. This will keep your wheels in tip top shape for many years to come. I'll link this product down below. So it really doesn't take a whole lot of lubricant to make a difference. You'll just wanna put a light dab on each spoke here. So once you have a pattern going, everything just starts to line up naturally. You'll notice the holes on the rim just line up perfectly with the spoke. So yeah, from here on out, it's pretty easy to get everything to line up. Just like the other side, the outside or the top spoke is gonna go to the left and the bottom spokes are gonna go to the right. And I would recommend getting the bottom spokes in first before lining up the top spokes since the uh, bottom spokes will go below the upper spokes. They're gonna cross like that, and you gotta make sure the upper spoke is on top. Everything lined up really good, and so the next step is gonna be to tighten down the spokes evenly to make our job of truing as easy as possible. So I'm gonna tighten down each spoke nipple until there's just a couple threads left on each spoke. And the process I'm gonna use for tightening the spokes evenly is I'm gonna find the hole in the rim here that is for the, uh, the tube. And I'm gonna start at this spoke here next to it, tighten it down till there's a couple threads left, and then I'm gonna skip two spokes, tighten this one down till there's a couple threads left, 
follow that same pattern all the way around the rim, come back to here, and then start on this one. And so basically you're gonna do that same pattern three times around the rim. At that point, you will have hit every single spoke and that tightens it down evenly and that'll make our job of truing pretty easy, honestly. All right, I've got all the spokes tightened evenly and this wheel is ready to true. But I was getting a little bit worried here. It looked like I was messing up the powder coat on the rim, but that's actually just the uh, the anti-seize. Tell you what, that stuff is pretty nasty. You definitely wanna wear gloves when you're using it. So front wheel's ready to go. Now the process for the rear wheel is gonna be exactly the same. So let's get this thing laced up. I'm already getting amped to get these things on the bike. These things are looking trick. Oh, and one last thing I would recommend doing before lacing the wheel is checking the wear marks on the hub. So you wanna look for the little wear spot from the spoke previously. So that indicates that there was an outer spoke here and an inner spoke there. So not a big deal, but I would recommend getting the spokes in the same holes as they were previously. And you can check for the same wear spots on the other side of the hub as well. And once again, the spoke with the longer head is the outer spoke, so it goes that way. And the ones with the shorter head go in this way. Now I've got all the spokes in place, and once again, looking at the wear pattern on the hub, you can see that the outer spokes face left, or go to the left, and the inner spokes go to the right. So same concept as the front wheel. All right, got the wheels all laced up. They're looking pretty sweet. So in the next video, I'll be showing you guys step by step how to true these wheels up on a truing stand as well as on the bike if you don't have a truing stand. So keep your eyes out for that. It's going to be a good one. Thanks for watching the video guys and like always if you enjoyed it or learned something new please share it and tell your buddies about it so they can enjoy it too. I'll see you all in the next one. Take care. Dude I gotta trim this beard up. It's getting gnarly.